Hey everyone, hope everyone is doing really well and is staying safe. I wanted to make a quick video to walk you through what you can expect our weeks to look like when we're learning from afar. Um, it's really important that we stay on top of this work because we don't know if the AP exams are changing or being uh, pushed back. So it's really important that we stay on top of our work so that we can remain competitive. If you have any questions about any of this, please feel free to send me a Jupyter message and email at sonia.spind at ousd.org or to shoot me a quick text if that feels easier for you. My phone number is 707-410-6023. I'm happy to answer any and every question that you may have. But please, please, please make sure that you watch the rest of this video because it'll walk you through all of the things that you need to know in order to submit work and to do it well. All right, talk to you guys soon. Make sure we understand how we can submit work over this break. So there's a few different things that I want to go over. The first of which is this document. It's called the D3 Continuity of Education Plan. You can always refer back to this document if you lose a message or you're not quite sure what you're supposed to do for each of your classes. And this applies to all D3 students, right? So you can see that each teacher that you have is linking work in here. So let's take a look at mine. You'll notice that it says SPINT plus MAC, APCSP. This does apply for both of our classes. And you'll notice that there's a folder called Corona Break. Now, inside of this folder are more folders. What I expect you guys to complete is the assignment in each of these folders for each day. I will update these folders as we progress through the next few weeks. As of right now, I only have the first few days uploaded, but I promise they will be there. All right, so let's take a look at day one since this is what we're working on. You'll be expected to complete these two worksheets, okay? Now, how do you submit this? Well, you're going to submit it either on Google Classroom if you're my student or on Schoology if you're Mr. Mac's student. Okay, so let's take a look at what it looks like on Google Classroom. So you'll notice that at the very top of your Google Classroom feed will be an assignment that's called Day 1 Coronavirus Assignment, right? I will always title it like this so you can keep track of the days that you've completed as well as the day that you need to work on. So if you click on this, you'll see something like this, all right? And there's some really important things that I wanna highlight. One, of course, the assignment that you actually need to complete, all right? Make sure you open that. The second thing that I want to um, point out is that the comment section contains a link to a video. These videos will describe what you need to do within the assignment as well as provide some background information if you need it. So please make sure you also check the comments. Finally, the due date. That's found at the very top. I will make sure that I am very, very careful about choosing these deadlines. That way you know exactly when you need to submit these assignments. So as you can see here, this is due tomorrow, Monday, at 11.59 p.m. So you'll have all day to do this. All right, so what are we working on over the next few days and the next few weeks? Well. As you remember from the digital portfolio, aka the place where you officially submit your work for College Board to grade, there's not only the create task, there's something called the explore task, and that's what we need to work on. It's really important that you complete all of these assignments and stay on top of your work because we don't know if the AP exam is changing. We don't know if they're pushing back the deadline or if they're going to reschedule the exam altogether. So it's really important that we stay on top of it so we remain competitive and that our scores aren't hurt because of this time off. We can still get stuff done. So what exactly is the explore task? Well, if you click on this and you can find this in your own digital portfolio, there's an overview, all right? And you'll notice that it says computing innovations impact our lives in ways that require considerable study and reflection for us to fully understand them. In this performance task, aka a project, you will explore a computing innovation of your choice. A computing innovation is an innovation that includes a computer or a program code as an integral part of its functionality. Your close examination of this computing innovation will deepen, deepen your understanding of computer science principles. 
So ultimately, it's a research project. You just need to choose a computing innovation that interests you and write about it. So what are the pieces of the explore task? Well, if we open the other links found to the left on your digital portfolio, the first part is our computational artifact. This is essentially going to be um, a diagram that describes what your computing innovation is. All right, and I'll open up some examples shortly. The other half of this project is the written responses. It's very similar to the written responses you saw for create tasks. They'll ask you some questions, you need to respond to them, um, and that's that. By the end of this break, the goal is that all students submit their explore tasks officially to College Board. And that means you're just uploading them to the digital portfolio. And now that you have practice submitting the create tasks, this hopefully won't be too hard. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples. And I wanna go through how I can find these examples because they may help help you and you'll wanna look for them too. So in your um, search engine, whatever it may be, search APCSP explore task, like so. And you'll notice, hopefully the first thing that pops up is the official college board description of the APCSP exam. So if you scroll down, you'll notice that they talk about each part of the exam, the performance tasks, like our create task and our explore task, as well as the end of year exam, 74 multiple choice exam that you'll take sometime in May. All right, so the thing that I really wanna highlight is College Board was super nice and posted a ton of examples from previous years. One thing that I really want to point out is the fact that they include their commentary. So let's open that. And you'll notice that it begins with the explore task rubric. So this is the actual rubric that AP graders will be using to score your explore tasks. You'll notice that there are eight requirements for the explore task, just like we saw with the create task. But more importantly, if you scroll down, they actually tell you the scores that they gave each sample. So sample A got full credit. They got one point per each row in the explore task rubric. Now, if you scroll down, they get progressively worse. So if we get to the last one, which is J, you'll notice that they didn't do terribly well. They only got two points for one and two, and then they missed everything else. So let's go back and actually take a look at these examples. Oops. Don't know why that happened. So let's open explore task A and explore task J. So like I said, there are two parts. The first part is the computational artifact and I'll go over how to make these later on in our break. So. Here's an example, a student did something on facial recognition software, okay? Then they made a little poster about it. Our second student also made a poster. You guys will be making a poster as well on your computing innovations. This student talked about the i9 Intel processor. Both of these are computing innovations. They utilize computers or programs to work. That's essentially the only requirement that you need when you're picking your idea. Now, if we take a look at their written responses, the second half of our explore test, you'll notice that there are a few questions that you need to respond to. I challenge you to read through these, but I will break them down further as we get later into this uh, next few weeks, okay? So let's talk a little bit about your first assignment. It looks like this, right? You'll notice that at the very top, it says, please review this list of potential explore task ideas. So I want you to open that and you'll be taken to this document. In this document is a long list of um, potential topics that you can choose from. The computing innovation is found on the left and then some supporting articles that I found online are found on the right. You need to choose one of these. Pick whichever one seems interesting to you. I really, really suggest you use one of these ideas because they're current and there are some deadlines in terms of when these computing innovations were created as well as talked about within the articles 
that may constrain your choice. If there's something you're super passionate about, please reach out to either Mr. Mac or I to get your idea cleared. If you're okay with choosing one of these, please just move forward and choose one of these, okay? So we head back to the assignment, and you'll notice that you just need to answer these questions, all right? Please notice the word count. You need to write a bit in terms of some summaries. And once you're done with this, you can submit it on Google Classroom. I think that's it. I'll make more videos as the week goes on, um, but please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions or concerns. Hope to hear from you soon.